human being and a person are not the same thing. We've been led to believe that they are, but they're not. In Black's Law Dictionary, you'll find the definition of a person, and it says, A human being is not a person because he is a human being, but because rights and duties have been ascribed to him. Specifically, the person is that legal subject or substance of which the rights and duties are attributes. But not all human beings are persons, as was the case in Old England when there were slaves. You are not a person, you have a person. We've been, if you never know that this person exists, if the government is acting upon it and you are unaware of its existence, you're a slave to your own ignorance. The purpose of, our, our, of this person, as it, it wasn't to deceive you, it wasn't to enslave you, it was to provide you with a very strong level of protection against government tyranny. If they never act against you as a human being and they're only acting against your person, you always have the option to reject their governments and therefore escape tyranny totally and absolutely peacefully. They'll tell you I'm an agent for the government, I'm a peace officer, I'm this, I'm that. No! You are a human being in a common law jurisdiction and that's all there is to it. That's first and foremost and I'm not forgetting that. If you remember that, they have to remember that. The key thing about remembering this is you can remember a couple of things. Yes, you can affect them. You can use, they will respond to emotion. They will respond to threats. They'll respond to a, a baseball bat in the bottom of their knee. They will respond. They will also respond to love, compassion, and truth. They are human beings, and if you treat them with the dignity that all human beings are worthy of, they will respond as a human being as well. Don't look at them as anything more than simply a human being using a tool. And the tool that they are using is words. All they are are words. The government is just composed of human beings using words. Take away the human beings, you don't have a government. Take away the words, you don't have a government. You need those two things in order for anyone to come up to you and claim any level of authority over you. If you learn to distinguish between actual law, and there is only three ways to break the law, harm another human being, damage someone else's property, use fraud or mischief in your contracts, you have broken the law. That's the only way to break the law. Statutes are not laws. If you look it up, you'll find that the definition of a statute is a legislated rule of society given the force of law. It's a law, it's a rule that has the force of law within a structured society because somebody gave it that force. Remember, we're all equal here. Who can give those words the force of law? Only you. You have decided to give those statutes the force of law within your societal structure. A society, if you look at the definition of that, it's a number of people joined by mutual consent to deliberate, determine, and act for a common goal. Your consent is required for any statute to have the force of law, and you can spot these, they'll have the word act right in the title. Point out the word act to any government agent asking or claiming authority over you, say what exactly does that word right there mean? And you will be two steps away from consent. You have every right in the world to stand right up and claim the status of a child of God. But the moment you do that, you do accept a lot of responsibility because then you have to look at everyone else with the same eyes. We want remedy. We want our power back. We want our remedy and we want to hold these people to the... We don't want to beat them up. We want abundance. We want peace. We don't want a life of conflict with these people. And we shouldn't have to dig through the shit they manufacture in order to find the diamonds of our freedom. Fundamental three things you should have learned. One, you are not a person. You have a person. It exists in association with you. Statutes are not laws. They do not apply to you. They apply to your person. And finally, believe it or not, you want your freedom. You want to become a free man on the land. You have to treat these people with compassion, regardless of what they've done to you. And I know how difficult that can be. There's a maxim in law. A Roman maxim that says, let he who would be deceived, be deceived. If you aren't even willing, if someone comes up to you and says, you have to do this, why? Oh, how do you know that? Everybody knows it. Oh, really? Nobody read the act, but everybody knows it. You start reading these act and you start finding the remedy within it. These people have a duty to understand and to distinguish between statute and law. They've been dealing with us for so long with people who are essentially ignorant that we don't even distinguish between statute and law, so they assume that you are going to be there. They'll say, oh, you broke this statute, you broke a law, I want to give you a ticket. 
And then they'll say, I need to see your ID. And if you don't show me ID, I'm going to arrest you for obstruction of justice. I've had cops do this to me, Skytrain cops. The fact is, though, until they see ID, they have absolutely no evidence of the existence of a person who is, re who is liable under the statute. So they're putting the cart before the horse. They're saying, I see a human being. It, the act says person must produce a proof affair. You're a person. I'm giving you a ticket. Now you have to show me your ID so I can give you a ticket because they've been told if you don't see ID, you can't give a ticket. They know this, but they're putting the cart before the horse. If they try, if they come up to you and they, what they like to do, they, they use presumption and assumption so often they won't even ask you a question. They come to the window, driver's license, registration, insurance, look at them and say, uh, apples, bananas, and pears. You're not making any sense. Like you used a complete sentence. What is it you want? Do you have a driver's license, registration, and insurance? Or may I see it is usually what they would ask because they're operating upon a presumption too. You ask them, are you willing to claim under full commercial liability that I have an obligation to have such a thing in order to exercise my common law rights? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And of course you don't. In order to find your free man status, you will need to distinguish. There is a, there are a maxim in law that says, he who distinguishes well, learns well. He who questions well, learns well. If you cannot question, you cannot distinguish, you are going to end up being a slave to them. The reason questioning is so powerful, if they ask you a question, you ask them a question right back. We're equal, we're playing tennis. The goal is to get them to answer the question first, answer none of their questions. The reason is, if you are trying, if you are asking questions, the assumption in law must be that you are asking because you don't understand and you want to understand so you can keep the law. The assumption is, and therefore, as long as you are continually asking questions, they can't do anything. They can't claim you're obstructing justice. They can't claim that you're not, uh, that you're in violation of any statute. Just keep asking questions.